so now in this lecture we are going to learn about polarization of light this is a very important phenomenon and this is a confirmatory test for light to have a transverse nature in all the wave phenomenon we have learnt the diffraction and Young's double slit experiments and all such things. The longitudinal waves can also exhibit those phenomena, but polarization is the phenomenon which can be only exhibited by a transverse wave. So, it confirms that light has a transverse character. So, light is actually an electromagnetic wave in which this is E waves, E waves, the direction of propagation of light as an electromagnetic wave is in this direction and we have this B waves, the electric fields oscillate, suppose I say this is x axis, y axis and z axis. So, you see the electric waves oscillate along x axis, z axis and your B field is confined within x y plane. So, this is the example of a plane polarized wave. So, what happens in a plane polarized wave? The electric field vectors have an orientation only oscillates within a fixed plane that is here z y plane that is called a plane polarized light. So, in order to understand the plane of polarization, now suppose we had a string, suppose I had a string here which is fixed here. Now, so suppose this is a string here and these are two planes. Now, if I oscillate this string like this, then we will have a web in this plane. So, the wave goes like this and I say the plane of the vibrations, the transverse vibration is in the plane of my board. So, here I have to move this up and down, this portion is up and down. Now, suppose here in another way also I can do, suppose I move this along here, so a wave will propagate like this on this horizontal plane, the whole string moves in a horizontal plane. So, we say that this transverse wave is horizontally polarized and this is vertically polarized. So, polarization is a phenomenon in which the, the oscillating electric fields are confined within a plane which has a fixed orientation. This is what we mean by polarization of light. Now, let us take a common example. Suppose we had a barbed wire fencing, suppose this is a barbed wire fencing, this is barbed wire fencing. Now, suppose if a person wants to cross the fencing like this, he cannot because these are, these are barbed barricades, these are barbed wires. So, what he has to do in order to cross, suppose this is a person, it is crossing like that when he reaches here, he has to bend like this. So, all the things, if it has to pass along this barred fence, it has to go like this, but it cannot go like this. That means, the if the plane of vibrations is horizontal, that thing can pass. If the plane of vibration is vertical, it will be stopped by this. That means, you see, whereas in longitudinal wave planes, the things are confined within this this plane. So, the wave goes this way and the particles oscillate along this way. So, longitudinal waves cannot be polarized whereas, transverse wave can be polarized. This is the important point. So, let us see different planes of polarization. Now, let us see the plane of polarization. Suppose this is an electromagnetic wave. I will draw only the E fields, electric fields. So, you see the electric fields 
are confined the electric field vectors are confined within along z axis the electric field is vibrating always along z axis and here the electric field is confined along x axis the electric field oscillates here along z y plane and here electric field vectors are confined along x y plane so this is the polarization we say the polarization of this wave is along x axis so we define polarization of this wave as x axis and polarization of this wave along z axis so this is what we mean by polarization it is polarization axis is that axis along which the electric field vectors oscillates are oriented so in this whole electromagnetic wave the e field vibrates along z y plane and here it is along x y plane now normal light is different from this these are plane polarized light normal light what happens so you see this is the vector this is along this and this is a vector so in a normal light what happens the electric vectors are oriented in all directions so this is the symbol we will use to denote normal light here i have drawn a circle suppose my these electric vectors is here now it is here if it is oscillating along the whole circle then i call it a circularly polarized wave so in circularly polarized wave suppose i how it is created suppose for a transverse wave if i do this type of motions then the waves are created like this then that wave is vertically polarized if i do like this then it is horizontally polarized but in circularly polarized light i have to do like this that means my whole amplitude vector the whole this rotates along a circle that is how a circularly polarized wave the whole string will be confined within a helical path so that will be called circularly polarized now natural light is not circularly polarized it is randomly polarized or unpolarized light we say natural light is randomly polarized polarized or un polarized this is what natural light is so plane of polarization is this simply polarization is the direction along this now what is the need of polarization now the polarization determines that the force a electromagnetic wave will exert on a charged body placed at a location or how the matter will interact with that that will be decided by polarization now let us see what is a polarizer a polarizer a polarizer is an optical device optical device whose input is unpolarized light and the output is plane polarized light plane polarized light and unpolarized light is given as input there are certain natural crystals tournamaline crystal calcite crystal which exhibit these properties so suppose i have taken a crystal and i have given an unpolarized light so unpolarized light actually i am drawing circularly polarized that means all plane of oscillation of electric field is present so 
the result is that we will get a plain polarized light. This is what a polarizer does. This is plain polarized light, plain polarized light and this is unpolarized light. This is called pass axis of a polarizer. Now, this is a calcite or turnamaline crystal. Now, a days we have synthetic polarizer made up of some plastic substances. Now, the working of this polarizer is similar to our wire grid. Now, suppose this is a wire grid, barbed wire grid. So, if we are going in this way, these wire will stop us, but if we are going this way, we can pass through it. So, inside the polarizer, there are some chain inside a synthetic polarizer, there are some long polymer chain at which at certain locations, periodic locations, there are conducting atoms. So, what happens when an electric field in this direction, so when a wave is going on, the field in this direction is absorbed by the conducting atoms and only field along this direction can pass. So, this direction will be called the pass axis, pass axis. In natural, this tournamaline crystal, there are at certain locations some iodine atoms along along these directions which absorb the fields along this direction and only allow the electric field vectors along these directions. So, we get a plane polarizer. This is the mechanism by which these polarizers produce a plane polarized light web. Now, by calculation we can show it can be shown that if I naught is the intensity of light here, then the intensity that is passing becomes I naught by 2. We are not going to show now, but it can be shown that if I naught is the intensity here, the intensity of the plane, if it is completely plane polarized, then it will be I naught by 2 and this is the work of a polarizer. Now, you see again the same apparatus we have taken this is my unpolarized light and this time I have rotated my polarizer by some 90 degree. Previously, this was your y axis. Now, I have rotated it by 90 degree. So, what happens? Then this time it is not allowing this, this component, this component is absent and only the horizontal components will pass out and the intensity is again I naught by 2 and I naught here suppose. That means, if you rotate it, then simply the plane of vibrations of electric field, the plane of polarization also rotates and always you will get a plane polarized light. This is what a, how, what is the role of polarizer in producing polarized light. So, now let us see what is an analyzer. An analyzer is a polarizer which is used to analyze polarized light. So, first of all, this is also a polar wide. Polarizer is also a polar wide, analyzer is also, they are same thing, but the usage is different. So, it is the usage which gives its name. So, now let us see this is a polarizer, this is P 1 and it is this is a polaroid P 1 whose role is the role of a polarizer and here I am giving unpolarized light or even we can give circularly polarized light. This is unpolarized light. Un polarized light. This is unpolarized light. Now, this is the pass axis. So, what happens here 
we get a polarized light. So, we get a plane polarized light, plane polarized light. Now, now we will place again an analyzer here, analyzer here. If I place this analyzer like this, this is P2, its role is to analyze, analyze this plane polarized light. What happens? We find the light to be coming, this is again plane polarized light. If I talk about intensity here I naught, once this is sir, unpolarized, it becomes polarized, it becomes I naught by 2 and this becomes I naught by 2. So, the analyzer has done nothing, simply it has passed these planes. Same thing we are doing now again here, this as my unpolarized light, this is my polarizer, this is P1 polarizer. So, it produces a plane polarized light. Now, here this time I have rotated this by 90 degree, this is 90 degree. So, this time I have rotated my analyzer P2, this is analyzer by 90 degree, what I observe is no light. So, when the pass axis of P1 and P2 are, when the pass axis of P1 and P2 here you see are parallel, this allows the light, but when they are perpendicular to each other, you see this analyzer is also a polar void, which with allow the light to pass only along this plane, but actually the light is incident normal to the pass axis. So, here you get no light. So, this is the role of analyzer. So, thus an analyzer is a polarizer which is used to analyze polarized light. So, whether this light is a plain polarized light or not that can be analyzed, its analysis can be done with the help of analyzer. So, you see if I rotate, if I start rotating this analyzer, then the intensity of the light here will start decreasing and when it is 90 degree, there is no light. So, next topic is our malice law, which will tell us that if they are at some angle, then how much light intensity will pass. Now, let us see what is malice law. Now, suppose this is the direction of the pass axis of polar wide P2 and this is the pass axis of polar wired P1. So, P2 is the pass axis of analyzer, analyzer and P1 is the pass axis of polarizer such that the angle between them is theta. So, these are the pass axis. So, when a light passes through, when the light passes through this is polarizer, this is the pass axis, this is your unpolarized light, then this is the plane polarized light, this direction is P1 and this is the direction of P2. So, this angle is theta, then there will be some light with the plane of polarization along P2. So, now this is suppose I naught, this is I 1 and this is I 2. I wish to know when this angle is 90 degree, I know it is 0, but when it is at some angle theta, how much intensity of light will pass if I naught. So, suppose there is an electric wave, uh, electric amplitude here, the amplitude of the electric field vectors here. Suppose this is A1 and 
its component here is going to be a 2. So, we can write a 2 is a 1 cos theta. Now, we know that the intensity is proportional to the square of the amplitude. So, a 2 square a 2 square is equal to so we can a 1 square cos square theta implies i 2 will be equal to i 1 cos square theta. This is Malus law. This is what Malus law. So, according to Malus law, according to Malus law, if the angle between the polarizer and the analyzer is theta, then the intensity of light, intensity of light coming out of the analyzer is given by I 2 is equal to I 1 cos square theta. Now, if this is I naught, this I know it is I naught by 2. So, this will be I naught by 2 cos square theta. So, this I 2 is equal to I 1 cos square theta is Malus law. So, now let us see how we can produce polarized lights. So, there are different mechanism polarization by scattering, polarization by reflections, by using nickel prisms, by polar wire and others. So, here we will concentrate now on polarization by scattering. So, suppose a let us consider a light scattered by a gas molecule. So, this is a molecule, these are some directions. So, here suppose I have a gas molecule. So, what happens when the light falls on this gas molecule? then this molecule scatters light. The molecule gets polarized, it forms a dipole and it oscillates as a dipole and it radiates light. So, suppose I had a web, electromagnetic web like this, which is incident here, these are E waves in this direction. That means, the wave is like this. This is a plane polarized light, plane polarized light. If this is a plane polarized light, what happens when this light is incident on this molecule, these molecules become a dipole radiator. It becomes a dipole radiator. So, when it becomes a dipole radiator, it is observed that it emits light electromagnetic waves in all the directions. This is how a electromagnetic wave when incident on a molecule makes it a dipole, induces a dipole and then it becomes as a dipole oscillator. This is the electric field. So, this dipole, this is polarized in this way. So, it radiates energy in this direction. Now, we observe that we get a electromagnetic web with these plane waves, electric waves in this direction. So, when this is a plane polarized like this, we observe that we get electromagnetic waves with plane polarization like this, but here no web, no web and this as plane polarized light. So, this is a result which is presently beyond our scope that this is a dipole radiator. So, when the dipole radiator is there, it is it will along its normal axis, it will radiate the electric field like this, but it would not radiate in this direction that electric fields. So, you will get no wave here. And because of these components, you will give a 
scattered wave in this direction. So, the phenomenon of radiating light in all planes is, is called scattering. This is called scattering. Now, suppose I change the direction of here polarization. Suppose I change now. Suppose I change it to this type of waves. That means, my electric fields are horizontal, then what will happen? Then the dipole, then this molecule will exhibit a dipole moment in this direction and here you will get no light. Here in that case, here you will get no light, no wave and here also we, you will get a wave that is in this direction, plane of polarization is that. So, this is how a that means, this is how a dipole radiator radiates energy. So, this component if this is horizontal component it will give in this direction, if it is vertical it gives in this direction. Now, natural light is actually unpolarized light that means, it contains all planes, all planes are there. So, so if all planes are there means, this plane will give this light and this plane will give this light. That means, if here I use a natural light which is scattered by a molecule, gas molecule present, then we will get plane polarized light on in all the directions along the plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation. This is a scattering object, the gas molecules act as a scatterer this is unpolarized light. So, in a direction normal to the initial direction of unpolarized light, all the lights will be completely plane polarized light. You see, if I select this direction, it is plane of polarization if is this, if it is this direction this. Now, suppose I select a direction not in this plane, then that light will be partially polarized light. So, when, so the light scattered scattered in the direction normal to normal to the direction of to the direction of unpolarized light unpolarized light is a plane polarized light is a plane polarized light. It was discovered by a James Stone manufacturer. The person was observing the brilliance of its James Stone at the time of sunset. So, when he took a James Stone and it, it was viewing the sun Thus, at the time of sunset, he observed that when he rotates its gemstone, the intensity of the light is decreasing. That is why, since the at the sunset, the light we are getting is scattered by nearly 90 degrees scattered. So, the scattered light at 90 degrees is nearly plain polarized light. So, when the gemstone was rotated, the polaroid was rotated, the intensity of the light decreased. So, that is how the scattered light is plane polarized light when it is in the scattered in the normal direction. Now, let us see another method of producing polarized light by reflection that is Brewster's law. So, when a light is incident, incident on a plane surface, plane surface separating two media of different refractive index, then some light is reflected and some light is transmitted. Now, the reflected light, 
the reflected light and the transmitted light are partially polarized they are partially polarized now according to the brister's law according to the brister's law brister's law if the angle between if the angle between the reflected ray and the transmitted ray is pi by 2 i they are perpendicular then the reflected ray the reflected ray becomes plane polarized and the transmitted ray is partially polarized this is important if the reflections are through multiple surfaces i if i do more reflections more transmissions then the transmitted light also becomes plane polarized this is also called this is also becoming plane polarized now let us see with the help of diagram now suppose this is a surface and a ray comes from here it gets reflected and it gets transmitted so this is reflected ray this is incident ray and this is the transmitted ray so here all the planes this is unpolarized light this is un polarized light this is partially partially polarized light this is also partially polarized light now brister's law tells that if it happens that this is the transmitted ray reflected ray and incident ray when this angle becomes 90 degree then this is plane polarized plane polarized light and this is partially partially polarized light if i produce one more surface one more surface then by multiple reflections this can be also made partially polarized light about the plane of polarization suppose this is a plane like this so this plane of polarization is along this plane the plane of polarization the plane of polarization is along this plane so if this plane this is the direction so this is the direction of propagation this means along this plane only these vectors are there this is the plane of polarization of the reflected light now the angle of incidence for which this will happen is called polarizing angle and let us see now here the ray comes it gets reflected and this is my transmitted ray this is called i ip i will call that is the polarizing angle so when the ray is incident at the polarizing angle the reflected ray is here plane polarized 
this is IP, this is reflected, so this is IP, this is 90 minus IP. So, here this is IP, this is again IP, the 90 minus IP, so this is IP, so this becomes 90 minus IP, this angle, that is R will be 90 minus angle. Now, applying Snell's law, applying Snell's law, so suppose this has, this air, this has mu. So, 1 into sin IP is equal to mu refractive index of this medium into sin 90 minus IP. So, we have sin IP is equal to mu cos IP that is tan IP is equal to mu. So, the polarizing angle is given by tan inverse mu. Thus, according to according to Brewster's law, Brewster's law, if the angle of incidence I is equal to IP is equal to tan inverse mu, then the reflected ray, ray becomes normal to the transmitted ray and is completely plane polarized. The reflected rays are generally partially polarized, but when it is normal to this, this becomes completely polarized. That is why in sunglasses, polaroid glasses, the reflected rays are reduced. So, the reflections, anti-reflection coatings and all those coatings are done, the polaroid glasses are used. So, they reduce, they reduce this reflected ray and thus the glaze is reduced.